Let's now have a think about what we mean by functions and what uh, MATLAB thinks a function is all about. Okay, in mathematics, um, a function can be regarded as an equation um, where it takes one or more values as an input, okay, and returns the corresponding output. And so we've all seen equations for a line where the function y or the, the, the expression y equals mx plus c, that's the equation for a line where m is the slope and c is the y-intercept. Well, that y is actually a function of x, okay? It's a dependent variable of x, and so that's why sometimes you see f of x equals mx plus c, okay? Where x is your input and the output is the function, okay? The function of x. Um, and so, you know, if you had f of x equals 2x uh, cubed minus 4, it takes a function for x, which is the only input, cubes it, multiplies it by 2, and then subtracts 4 to obtain f of x, which is the output, okay? And if you had a function with two input arguments, x and y, so we've got g of x and y equals x squared plus y, it takes x, the first input, squares it, and adds it to y, which is the second input. And then you get an output g of x, y. And this concept can be extended to MATLAB and many other programming languages where you can take uh, an input and it, then the um, MATLAB or the other programming language will actually operate to, to run some commands based upon that input and then produce you an output. And there are a bunch of sort of built-in functions that we've already used, things like square root. If I type in square root, SQRT, and then I type in 8, OK, obviously there, my input there is 8. I'm running a function called square root, and when I press return, it returns the output, which is the square root of 8. And likewise, nth root, we did this um, back in chapter 1. That's the cube root of 8. And see again, nth root is another function. I run with two with two input arguments here, eight being the uh, the, the the thing that we're producing the root from, and then three is also the value for n. So we're finding the cube root. So it takes two input arguments, runs the function, and will produce an output n. Okay. So, like I said, the key thing here is that MATLAB can take one or more inputs, does something with them, and then returns one or more outputs. OK, um, and within MATLAB, that input doesn't necessarily even need to be a number or single numerical value, but it could be vectors, it could be matrices, and it could even be a string of characters. Um, we, you know, it's, it's, sort of, it's quite flexible in that sense. Now, obviously, we've used these built-in functions because there are many of them, OK, but MATLAB also allows you to create your own custom functions, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. OK, um, so, you know, we're not obviously not, we're not going to take, we're not going to create a custom function to find the cube root or the square root, but we're going to create some custom functions to do other things. Okay. Now, the function file itself is actually an M file, so we're going to make a new script, and I'll just talk about how we, how we construct a function. So if I, if I clear this screen, okay, and we'll make a new script. Okay, so here we are. Now, a function will always have the same sort of uh, setup. We always start with function, okay, and then we talk about the output arguments, okay. Um, so that's going to be what that output are going to be, and then we've got, we've got a function name, okay, name, and there's going to be talking about the input arguments here, okay. So that's how that's always starts, and it always ends with an end. Well, okay, so you can see that MATLAB recognizes that we've got a function that ends. Okay, it's always useful to have something um, about the function in the comments. Um, so here, if we call a summary of this function, it goes here. And then um, perhaps in here, a detailed, detailed explanation goes here. Okay, so that's the basics of the function. And then in this bit is where we run our various commands we take we do something with the in, input argument so i'll comment it out we do something uh, with the uh, input argument okay um and set the output args to be something that gets outputted okay when a function is run is run so that's basically how that works now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create the, 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 the function that we've got in the notes here, okay? And this function is basically a, a, a calculator that will work out the cylinder volume based upon the height and the diameter of the cylinder volume. So let's modify this script 
to actually um, um, get it to work. So this function bit here is mandatory. We need that in there, as is the end. Okay. The output argument for this particular function is going to be the cylinder volume. Okay. So that's what we're going to get a look. Now, cylinder volume will actually be a variable that's defined internally within the function. Okay. And the function name. Okay. We'll call this. Um, we'll call this calc vol. Calc vol. Calc vol. And my input arguments. Okay. We'll call this diameter and height. Okay, they're the two input arguments. So in here, let's put the function name. So we've got calc vol. Okay. Calculates oops, calculates cylinder volume. Okay. Let's delete that there. And then here we're going to put um uh something about the argument okay so sorry something about about what it does so that's right here calc uh, vol dh okay this is the volume of a cylinder with a diameter d and a height h okay and uh, then, like script files, I'm going to put my name in as the author, and we're going to put the date in. Uh, so let's go for date of today, which is the 29th of October 2020. Okay, and then we're going to write the commands. Okay, so we could actually add a variable dictionary if you wanted to, variable dictionary, because um, there are going to be some variables that we're going to define in here. So we've got um, diameter which is the cylinder diameter, which is an input, okay. We also got height, which is the cylinder height, which is also an input, okay. And we have uh, the cross-sectional area, Okay, and that's internal. And we also have the uh, cylinder volume, which is the cylinder volume. And that is our output. Okay. So we take our inputs diameter and height. Okay, we crack, crack at the cross sectional area. So this is just MATLAB commands that are going to run. So we take the pi times diameter. Uh, we square the diameter and we divide it by four. That's the area of the cylinder. Oh, sorry, the area of the circle. And then obviously the, the volume, sil vol, is going to be the cross sectional area times by the height. Okay. And that's that's it. That's the function. Okay. Now notice, like I said, we've got some inputs. So up here we've got an input of diameter, an input of height. Okay. And then we also have an output of sil vol. Okay, but what the function does inside is that you must you must make use of those inputs. Okay, so we've got diameter here, we've got height here, so we're making use of those inputs. This variable here that we've got in here is a variable that the function uses, but it's not going to be a global variable. That's just an internal variable. And then silvol is our output. So at some point within this function, you must define what the output is going to be. Okay, so if we save that now, so if I save that. Click save. Okay. And uh, notice it already comes up with calc vol as my suggested name because that's the function. Press save. Okay, so I've now got this this function called calc vol.m. And so now, so like I said, let's just work through it. We've got a function up here. This must this is necessary to create a function. Okay, it tells MATLAB that the M file is a function. Okay, and if that wasn't there, then it wouldn't see that this is actually a function. The out output arguments, okay, that's going to be what is output from the function. In this case, we've just got one output, which is um, the volume of the cylinder. Okay, we've got function name in here, so that uh, tells us what the function is called. Um, and standard practice that you should save the M file with the name you've used. Okay, so that's the function name there. Okay, and then obviously, like I said, that 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 is also the name of the of our function. Okay. Input arguments contain the inputs, okay, and diameter and height in this 
are basically inputs, but they're also internal variables. Okay, we'll see what see what I mean by that. And then we've got this comment up here, just to, 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 talks about what the um, uh, what the function does, which is uh, standard practice. It's good practice. Um, again, so that when you're, you know, if, if somebody else is reading your script and they see this function, they can work out what the function actually does. Okay. And then, like I said, you've got your variable dictionary in here, um, and uh, also named last update date. Let's put the last update just to be clear. Um, and uh, and uh, then we can, and then like I said, we can talk about what's going on. So if, now if I I've saved that. So now if I go into the command window and I typed in, uh, let's go for cylinder volume um, equals calc vol. So there's my function calling it, and I'm going to give it. Um, uh, let's go for a diameter of three. Notice it comes up with the correct suggestion based upon the inputs and the height of five. Okay, and I run it. I get my volume. Okay, in whatever units they may be. Okay, so there's the output. And if you wanted to work it out on your calculator, you could do so, but I assure you that's correct. Okay. The other thing you can do with functions is you don't actually have to define those inputs as numbers. So if we, if we said, okay, diameter is three and height is five, okay, and we actually write calc roll, oops, calc roll D and H, and we run it, we got the same answer. And you know, notice that D and H aren't the value, aren't the variable names that we've got in the in the function diameter and height. It take whatever if we said x equals three, and y equals five, we could do calc roll, calc roll, oops, calc roll, calc roll, um, uh, x and y, and it will give the same answer. Okay, there we go. So it's worth reiterating how the function file works. Okay, you can call a function file by entering its name, followed by any input arguments required um, by enclosing them in parentheses, okay, curly curly brackets. Um, for example, to find the square root of eight, you would use sqrt eight, okay? So eight is our input, sqrt is the function, and we run the function and it produces an output, okay? Eight is the input argument. In our calc vol example, um, anything that goes in the input arguments, there's two arguments there: the diameter and the height of the of the cylinder that you want to find the volume for. Okay. When the function file runs, okay, it outputs whatever is in the square brackets in here. Okay, so seal vol um, in this in this in this case here. And as such, the variable in that square brackets needs to be defined given some value within the function file, okay? So if in the example, in this example, notice that silvol is given a value in the function, it's here, that silvol equals CS area times by height. And since that's the that variable name in the square brackets um, in the first line, this is the value that will be returned to the workspace once we en enter it, okay? Now there can be more than one output of a function, okay? It's whatever's up in here is, is the output. So we can actually enter two values in here separated by a, um, a comma. So I'm gonna actually add another one, CS area, okay? And those are now two outputs based upon the input. Now to call that function and get the output, we could actually say, okay, well, let's say the area um, of our cylinder, let's call it area cylinder, and the, um, we need to put this in square brackets as well. And the volume, so um, I'll go volume cylinder um, um, is what the things we want to define in our in our script or whatever equals calc vol. Okay, D and H. Let's use that. Now, when we return this, okay, we're going actually going to get two things defined in our workspace: area seal and volume seal. Okay, uh, based upon our function. So we click go, and you can see the area seal is actually defined. Okay, and so is the volume seal um, is also defined um, there. Okay, so that's how you get, that's how you call, that's how you get multiple outputs of the same um, uh, function. Okay, is you added more variables up here, and these need to be variables that are also defined within the function. Okay, clearly if CS area isn't defined, okay, so all of that, let's, let's add a, I don't know, let's call it cross sec, whatever. So we're trying to do the same thing. If I run, try and run the function again, um, 
There it is. Clearly, it's got. It's, it can't work it out because it doesn't know what, doesn't know what cross sec is. Now, in the notes, there's an example of a of a function with multiple inputs and I'm oh, sorry, one input and multiple outputs. Okay, called Q, roots galore, and you can take a look at that in the notes on page um, page uh, sixty one.